Pivot tables are a great way to summarize your data, but pivot charts can be a pain in the neck because they're not as customizable as regular Excel charts. They only play nice with data from one pivot table and pivot charts aren't available for all types of charts. So sunbursts, scatter charts, histograms and waterfalls don't come with a pivot chart equivalent. But pivot tables make our life easy and slices are cool. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to trick regular charts into using pivot tables as their source data so you can have the best of both worlds. In this file, I have two source data tables, one for actual sales and one for budgeted sales. Now I want to summarize this data using pivot tables, but I want the flexibility of regular charts. Now there are three approaches we can use. The first one is to build another table that references the pivot tables and feeds the chart. I call it the manual chart table. This approach is useful if the data in the pivot tables isn't organized in the same way, as you can see here with the categories in different orders, or if the order can't be relied upon to always be the same in both pivot tables. So I'm going to start by simply grabbing the row labels from one of the pivot tables. This one here will do. It's already in alphabetical order and we'll just drag it down. Next, I need to grab the actual figures and I'm going to use the get pivot data function that automatically populates when you select a values field in a pivot table. But I'm going to replace this hard keyed label for beverages with a reference to the cell containing the category. And that'll allow me just to copy it down with a double click of the fill handle. Let's do the same for the budget amount, replacing seafood with beverages. That way it doesn't matter what row this formula is on, it's going to always find the beverages value from the pivot table containing the budget figures. Again, let's double click the fill handle to copy it down. So there's my table for my chart. Now all I need to do is insert the chart and I'll go with a regular column chart. Let me bring it over here and I'll make it a bit bigger. I'll quickly do some formatting. So clicking on one of the columns, I'm going to control one to open the format pane. And here I want series overlap 100%. And then I'm just going to format the column. These are the columns for the budget amounts. So I want no fill and I'm going to give them a border. Let's pick a color that's going to stand out and I'll make it a bit thicker. Next, I'll do a little bit more formatting quickly because I can't help myself. Let's get rid of the title and we'll move the legend to the top. So with this method, I can refresh the pivot tables and any changes to the values are going to automatically feed through to my manual chart table and then through to the chart. Now, I just want to show you another technique. If you have dynamic arrays, then we can use some different formulas and I'll move the chart down a little bit. Instead of just referencing one of these category label fields in the pivot table, I can use the filter function to grab this list and I can extend past the end to allow for growth in that list of categories. I want to include the labels in these cells that aren't empty. And then I simply close parentheses and press enter because it's a dynamic array, it spills the results. Now, as a precaution, I'm going to wrap it in the sort function, which will make sure that this list that feeds my chart is always sorted, even if the pivot table isn't. Now all I need to do is find the actual and budget figures and I can use the dynamic array function XLOOKUP to find this list of values. Notice it puts in the spill array operator, the pound sign, and that means that if this list grows, I don't need to edit my XLOOKUP, it will automatically grow as well. So it's looking up the category in the pivot table here. Now I want to extend past the end to allow for growth and it's returning the actual. I'm going to press enter and it spills. All I need to do is repeat that for the budget. And I'm looking up the budget table, allowing for growth and returning the sum of budget. So the benefit of the dynamic array formulas is that if the pivot table expands with new categories, the dynamic array formulas will automatically pick up the new rows. Now, method two is useful if the order of the data is identical in each pivot table, and you can be certain it always will be, like with months of the year that we have here, or if you only have one pivot table that you need to feed your chart with. 
You can then skip the manual chart table example we just looked at and simply reference the pivot tables using dynamic named ranges. Now we need three dynamic named ranges for the chart, one for the actual series, one for the budget series, and one for the axis labels. So via the formulas tab, I'm going to define a new name. We'll set up the chart actual first. Now you can use offset or index to create a dynamic named range. I'm going to go with offset. If you're not familiar with offset, make sure you download the Excel file and the link is in the video description. In there, there'll be links where you can learn more about offset. So the first argument for offset is the reference. Well, January's actual value will be my starting reference. The next argument is how many rows from that cell D5 do I want to move down? Well, I don't want to move down any, so I'm going to skip that argument. The next argument is how many columns do I want to move across? I don't want to move across any, I want to stay there. That's the first cell in my range, so I'll skip that as well. Then I need to tell offset how big I want this range, how many rows. So I'm going to use the count A function to count the number of months in my pivot table. And remember, I want to allow for growth, so we'll extend down to row 30. That's going to give me the height of my range. And the width of my range is only one column, so I'm just going to skip that argument and close offset click OK now we can check that the name has been set up correctly by selecting it in the name manager and then click in the refers to the marching ants show me how this offset formula is evaluating and the range that it's going to return so that's all good I'm going to copy it create a new one and this is going to be for my budget and I'm just going to paste it in here and edit it so instead of starting in cell D5, I'm going to start in cell H5. And I'm going to count column G. And I'm just going to press F2. That will allow me to arrow through and replace C with G there as well. So I'll click OK. Let's check it's evaluating correctly. It is, so it's all good. So I'm going to create the last dynamic named range, and that's for the axis. And again, we'll use offset. Now this one, I want to pick up the year label and the month. So this range I want to return will be two columns wide. We're going to skip the row argument and the column argument. I'm going to use count A to count how many month labels I have. And I'm going to allow for growth down to row 30. So that's going to give me the height of my range. And then I want it to be two columns wide. Close parentheses. Let's check that it evaluates correctly. It does. So now all I need to do is insert my chart. So with nothing selected, just an empty cell, I'm going to insert an empty chart. I'm going to right click and we'll go into select data and we'll add a series. The first one will be for my chart actual. Now I'm going to use the dynamic named ranges that we set up, but they need to be prefixed by the sheet name. So I'm just going to select any cell in the sheet. And then I'm going to delete the cell reference. Press F3 to bring up the paste name box. I'm going to double click on the name I want to insert. So that's my actual. Let's add another series for the budget. Doing the same thing, just click any old cell. Notice that I'm keeping the exclamation mark. And this one's the budget. And then the chart axis, remember we need the sheet name first, delete the cell reference, F3, insert the chart axis and click OK. You can see the chart behind is taking shape. So I'll click OK again. Now I won't spend time formatting this. It's the same as the manual chart table chart that I just built. So I think you can go ahead and figure that out on your own. Keep in mind that the benefit with this method is as these pivot tables grow and more months are added to them, this chart's going to automatically pick them up. I don't need to worry about editing any of the references to the cells that the chart has because it's reading those dynamic named ranges. The final method, which I call the bait and switch, is a bit less work than the previous methods. It works well with charts that can ignore empty cells like the tree map and sunburst, etc. The first step is to create a pivot table containing the data for the chart and insert a slicer if you require one. Then I'm going to Control A to select all of the data in the pivot table, Control C to copy it, and I'm just going to paste it here in some empty cells and I want to paste it as values. So Alt ESV is keyboard shortcut, press enter. There's my data. Now all I need to do is insert the chart and I'm going to use a tree map. 
So now my tree map is attached to this data behind, I want to point it back to the pivot table. So all I need to do is right click and go in select data and edit the references so that they reference the pivot table. So instead of column G for actuals, I want column C. So we'll change that reference there and this here and here. Click OK. And let's repeat for the category labels. So instead of columns E and F, I want columns A and B. So let's change that A to B. Click OK and OK. So the chart hasn't changed and you can see that it's referencing the pivot table. So now I can get rid of these cells here. Control minus to delete the columns. Let's bring the slicer back across and I'll just move the chart as well. Now you can see as I select some categories in the slicer, it filters and the chart updates. And if we select the chart, you can see it's still referencing all these empty cells. So that when I select all of the categories again, the chart updates. But having those empty cells isn't affecting the appearance of the chart. So like I said, this technique is great for charts that ignore empty cells in their range. So it's not going to work for every scenario. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. I hope you can make use of these techniques. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And don't forget to share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.